This is the kind of basic differential controller we'll be assembling today. As you know, differential controllers are used to maximize a solar collector heat harvest. Some are digitally programmable with built-in temperature displays. Some controllers respond to temperature in an analog fashion and also have monitors. Some use a bar graph to display temperature. Some are designed to work with a small PV power supply without a battery backup. Some are versatile. They can power either AC or DC pumps requiring up to 500 watts of power. They are less expensive than controllers with monitors and some are easy to build and operate with one differential adjustment. Notice the adapter jack used to simplify the DC supply connector and the LED used to indicate when the pump is on. An improvement on the basic controller design was inspired by one of my customers who expressed an interest in dual indicators. The red LED comes on when the pump is activated and the green LED indicates temperature difference. It grows brighter as the difference in temperature between collector and storage increases. The basic differential controller we'll be assembling today is based on the dual LED indicator system modified for an enclosure. The pump on and pump off temperature adjustments have been integrated into one simple pot adjustment that may be accessed through a hole in the enclosure. The wiring hookup has also been greatly simplified and may be done without removing the enclosure lid. You may use a prototype board if you wish, but I'll be using this printed circuit board to simplify the assembly. We'll need a quad op-amp to regulate the pump and display the differential. You could solder a 14-pin dual inline processor socket to hold the op-amp, or you may solder the op-amp directly to the board. Only five resistors are needed for this analog circuit. These two resistors limit the latch range. I've chosen a latch range of about 10 degrees Fahrenheit to turn the pump off. In other words, if the pump is set to come on when the differential temperature is 15 degrees, the pump shuts off when the differential approaches 5 degrees. The next set of resistors are used to limit the temperature differential on adjustment from minus 5 degrees Fahrenheit to plus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the last resistor limits the current to the pump on the indicator LED. So far, so good. Now let's install some diodes. We'll need three diodes. One clamps reverse voltage spikes generated from the relay and the other two limit the current to the differential indicator LED. This diode clamps noise from the relay and these diodes adjust the current to the green LED so that the glowing begins when the probe temperatures are equal. Now we're ready to install the differential potentiometer. It's an odd looking pot, but you'll soon understand why I chose it. For now, just solder it where it belongs. Good show. Now let's install some capacitors. The capacitor on the left filters noise from the plus 12 volt supply, and the capacitor on the right filters noise from the plus 5 volt supply. The last capacitor suppresses noise picked up from both probes. The plus 5 volt regulator needs to be oriented in the right direction to work properly. The connectors may be installed first, but I normally drop in the regulator first so I have more room to work with. There are three connectors, and the first two may be joined together to form J1. They are used to connect the pump, the power, and the probes. That was easy. Now we can work on the LEDs. In order for the LEDs to extend through the top cover, we'll have to add extension sleeves. These sleeves are made from a screen spline. Keep the leads of the LEDs perpendicular while soldering them in place. Almost done, but we still have to solder the relay. This relay can connect more than 500 watts of AC or DC power but you must add extra solder to the relay lands so it can handle the current. 
Good job. Now let's clean the board with alcohol and spray the solder connections with clear acrylic before installing it in the enclosure. The enclosure is made from 1x2s and 1x3s and the lid is cut from quarter inch paneling. 4. Number 6 screws hold the board in place and screen spline spacers are used to hold the PCB above the mounting platform. Remember that odd looking pot? Now you'll see why I use it. Before pressing the top lid in place, install the differential pot sleeve guide. It fits over the top of the pot and is held in place with the countersink cavity of the differential access hole. The finished controller looks like this. The red and green LEDs protrude through the holes made for them, and the pot sleeve guide lines up with the differential adjustment hole, so the differential adjustment screwdriver lines up with the pot. Congratulations on the completion of the enclosed differential controller. Now we're ready for testing, but instead of using thermistor probes that change resistance with temperature, we'll use a set of variable resistors to simulate temperature changes between 5 degrees Fahrenheit and 250 degrees Fahrenheit. The pot on the left simulates collector temperature, and the pot on the right simulates storage temperature. The central pin of this three-pin connector is used to measure the differential voltage. We'll use this to estimate the differential temperature. For our first experiment, we'll set our differential pot midway between energy collection and energy conservation. The test fixture pots are also adjusted in the mid-range, so the collector and the storage temperatures are both about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Notice that both LEDs are off and the differential voltage is midway between the plus 5 volt reference and ground, or 2.5 volts. For the remainder of this experiment, we'll keep the storage temperature the same at 70 degrees Fahrenheit to simplify the demonstration. The collector temperature is increased to 79 degrees Fahrenheit and the red pump indicator LED is still off. But you should notice that the green LED is beginning to glow and the differential voltage has increased to 2.89 volts. The collector temperature is now increased to 80 degrees Fahrenheit and the differential voltage has increased to 2.91 volts. This differential is high enough to activate the pump and turn on the red LED. Let's continue to raise the collector temperature and see what happens. Now the collector temperature is 105 degrees Fahrenheit and the differential is 3.51 volts and the pump is still on, as expected. Also, Notice that the green differential indicator is glowing more brightly as the differential increases. What do you think would happen if we turn the collector temperature back down? When the collector temperature is turned down to 71 degrees Fahrenheit, the differential voltage drops to 2.52 volts, and the green differential LED is out. But notice the pump is still on. The latch circuit keeps the pump on until the collector temperature gets closer to the storage temperature. At a collector temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit, the pump finally turns off. This is a very low differential setting, and I do not recommend very low differential settings. But remember, the differential pot can be adjusted. A moderate counterclockwise adjustment maximizes heat gain while a clockwise adjustment maximizes energy conservation. So, the best pot adjustment will normally be halfway between the devil and the deep blue sea. Let's increase the differential and see what happens. Sorry for running out of time, but there will be another video coming along soon called Basic Controller Test. Thank you for your time. Google JC Solar for more information.